What's up guys, Grim Tutor, Blightsteel Colossus, and Terror of the Peaks are this month's Patreon rewards. We've also incorporated brand new tiers for those of you who'd like to get your hands on some of our awesome previous proxies very, very quickly. To support our channel and sign up for the tier that best suits you, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on guys? Welcome to part two of this Terror of the Thorns deck. Is that what I called it? Uh, I need to check. I, I have to check. Yes, Terror of the Thorns. Uh, I got it wrong at the end of the, fir or the first video. But speaking of the first video, uh, if you are interested, please go watch that one. Um, not only did we get like really lucky and have three straight wins, which always feels amazing, uh, but, uh, I think we're learning about what this deck is good against and what it's not. Ooh, look at these, these avatars against each other. Oh my goodness. Um, so I'm, I'm learning that there's some really, really interesting stuff that I think this deck does really, really well. Uh, and sometimes, unfortunately, I'm, I'm a little worried about particular matchups. So I'm kind of hoping that we get up against like a control deck or something along those lines this time around. So we can kind of see that in action. Uh, I don't know that this is going to be that deck, but we'll find out. Um, we will see. Let's go ahead. Um, uh, I'm going to get the Paradise Druid down, I think. Um, I'm good either way with this, to be honest. It doesn't... I, I don't think Gross Viral versus Paradise Druid matters too much at this point, but uh, we'll see. Looks like Spells matters. That's fine. They were very kind. We'll be very kind back. Um, let's do this. And we'll just do this. Go ahead and drop Uro. Um, get this down. And I'm actually going to hold off here. Um, because this is a Spells Matters deck, the chances of them having like a Shock or something like that are very, very likely. Uh, it'd be great to be able to hold off on that. Getting Terror of the Peaks down is going to be really crucial here because it does allow us to get rid of the Electromancer, which is obviously cheapening up uh, a lot of what they do. That's going to be a little tricky, uh, regardless, because my guess is they've got things like blitzes and stuff like that that are going to be really, really good against a lot of the big stuff that we have. Uh, they've already got one, two, three things in the graveyard. Wow, Arclight Phoenix. Okay. Arclight Phoenix it is. Uh, this is a very similar deck. It might be the exact deck that we played very recently, um, which is perfectly fine. It's a good deck. I really enjoyed that deck, actually. I'm just going to go ahead and grow spiral. I keep holding off on it, but we don't really need to. Okay. Well, unfortunately, no land, but that's okay. Uh, Let's see. Is Cavalier of Thorns actually better is my question. It's easier to not be able to kill. <laughs> um, I'm going to do this. This may be incorrect, but this also gets us a land, uh, which is pretty crucial. Um. And when it dies, we get to pull something back. Uh, so if they do decide to kill it, we've got a way to hopefully um, get some value out of it. This also just blocks the Phoenix super, super well. So, uh, And it looks like they're going to go for it again. They've got another Phoenix. Um, chances are they may be able to just kill this with a Blitz. Um, I've not seen them discard one quite yet. So this is not the exact deck that we played. We did not have Discovery. Um, so maybe they won't have Blitz. They're going to have Blitz. Blitz is such a good card in this deck. Wait for it. There it is. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, unfortunately, that means we don't get the trigger because it is exiled. So, unfortunately, that's just how that works. Uh, okay. Well, that's pretty good. Um, hmm. We really need more land, uh, unfortunately. And we're just not getting it. Uh, we got to play Terror here. Uh, we just have to. It's a bit more of a must answer on their end. Um, unfortunately, chances are they have another Blitz based on the number of cards that they've drawn. They're halfway through their deck right now. Um, so chances are they've got another one. But we do have to make them have it. Um, and unfortunately, this is going to be a little rough. Uh, yeah, Lava Coil it. Sure. You got it. Um... The Electromancer are doing quite a bit of work for them and making everything very, very efficient. Uh, though they did not lead on a reunion or anything like that, which makes me think maybe they don't have another Phoenix. They did not. Uh, I'm all too happy to trade this off here. It's not great, but it's something. Uh, okay. 
Uh, yeah, let's just do this. Two, three, four, five. I think, yeah, they are just gonna win here, I'm sure, but uh, we at least gain a little bit here. Um, you know what? I'm gonna pay two. Let's do this. We'll obviously keep the 6-6 six, six on the field, but this does gain us some life. And a Genesis Ultimatum. Now, if they can't kill us this turn, we have a shot. But chances are they're gonna be able to kill us this turn. <laughs> Uh, okay. Maybe not. Do they have just a shock? If they have a shock, they win. Which is gonna really suck. Oh. Oh, my heart. My soul. <laughs> it is what it is. It happens. Um, alright. Well, that's one of the matchups, obviously, where we struggle. And I, I think Blitz is the reason. Um, that card is so good in that deck. Uh, it's just so efficient. Uh, two mana, potentially one mana... Uh, if you've got Goblin Electromancer out, and you can pretty much kill anything based on the amount of stuff that you've got in the graveyard, incense and sorceries in the graveyard. Not only that, it exiles it. It exiles it. That is insane. Uh, but it is very, very good, so well done, opponent. Uh, let's keep this. This is not amazing, but it's fine. Uh, let's do this. We'll pay two, and we'll get a Grazer down. Uh, let's drop a Steam Vents here, just so we've got, you know all of our colors technically right off the bat. Um, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna Uro. Just because we know we've got another land, so I'd like to go ahead and get as much of this down as quickly as possible, especially with Terror of the Peaks and Cavalier in hand. Uh, not gonna attack for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, now this is a deck that I did wanna see how well we go up against them. Uh, chances are not well, um, but is going to be quite interesting. Let's do this. Hmm. I'm going to tear. It's a bit of a greedy play. I think the safer thing would definitely have been Cavalier, but uh, this gives us an out next turn to not only deal some damage, but against a sweeper, it's kind of fine. Um, wow, that's so good against Uro. Goodness gracious, that's good. Sure. Got it. Well done. They got two Uros in that exchange. That's pretty good, uh, unfortunately. Uh, okay, let's do this. Good news is we get to take out Ashiok immediately, uh, which is very, very nice. We'll go ahead and get a forest here. Um, I am going to grow Spiral now. Um, it's not going to matter too much, but I just figure... Let's go ahead and get all the land down that we possibly can, and we'll swing in. Chances are they're going to have a sweeper here. Um, Shatter the Sky is very, very likely. Uh, the only good news is we do have at least some things in the graveyard that we can get back with Cavalier if they do this. So, there's hope. Um, it's not amazing hope, but it's hope. <laughs> uh, we also just get to draw a card if they do that. Oh, it's a fairy. Okay. That's different. Um, so they do get to face something out on our side, which is going to be annoying. Let's drop Uro. See what they do in response. Chances are they're going to phase this out. Oh, well, we just have another tear. Um, this is probably incorrect, actually. Um attack here they're gonna block I'm sure but all right only good news is if they do sweep Terra the peaks one of them is gonna stay if I'm not mistaken uh, that might be incorrect but I believe that's how that phasing works um, maybe they're not gonna sweep though if they're paying if they shock themselves for that fifth mana I'm interested to know what they want to do with it um. oh Okay. Sure. You got it. <clears throat> it. Means we will be able to kill Teferi this turn. Like, easy. Easy peasy. Uh, let's just do this. Drop Uro. One, two, three. Uh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do that. I kind of want the Beanstalk Giant in a weird way, because with Terror of the Peaks out, that's just stupid good. 
so the question is, can we just win this turn? And the answer is yes. Uh, we shoot them for six and we just attack for ten. So we win. They have no mana. Teferi is now used. So there's nothing they can do, right? And we get a land down. Woo! Let's even attack with the Grazer. <clears throat> there you go. We got there. Uh, I was fully expecting a sweeper, and I think given them having a sweeper, uh, we would have been in much rougher shape. Um, but it worked out. We got to uh, we got to try some things, so that worked out. Uh, let's go to our last game, and then we'll kind of sum up the deck, uh, kind of summarize our thoughts on it, and specifically what cards make this so interesting um, is what I will say. There are a lot of things that I think make this deck interesting, but uh, we'll talk about that in just a bit. Uh, I do think this deck in particular is susceptible to sweepers and counters, and that's why I would suggest that um, a lot of the like control decks would have a very easier, uh, a much easier time dealing with a deck like this. Um, now that might be incorrect, I don't know, but that's just my take. Um, Technically, we should represent, so we are, but really doesn't matter that much. Um, we're going to just be gross spiraling. Uh, and then hopefully, if we can get our third land, then that gives us Uro mana, uh, which is going to help us, again, get to more and more stuff. Very good, though. They get to draw a card here. Mono blue right now th with this little interaction is very cool. No doubt. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uro. Hopefully draw a land. Perfect. So now we've got Terror mana. Uh, we've also got Cavalier mana. We've got options here. Um, now, chances are they also have counters, and they've also probably got bounce spells, because they're, again, trying to connect with this as much as possible. So there is definitely a possibility that they've got all the answers in the world. But uh, we got to try. Um, so I think we will. Let's try for Terror. Chances are this doesn't land. Like, almost 100% this doesn't land. Uh, or it does and they bounce it. But yeah, there we go. And that's fine. Um, next turn we Cavalier, potentially. We're just kind of trying to burn stuff on their side, unfortunately. I know that that kind of sucks, um, especially since they're drawing so many cards here. Um, but it's the best we can do, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Let's see. What is going to be the best play? Well, yeah, let's try and Cavalier. It's not going to happen. Neutralize number two, I'm going to guess. Oh, no. Opt. And then neutralize number two. Going to bet on it. Uh, if this does stick, it does help us get the lands, which is obviously crucial. Wow. Okay. So they don't have a counter. Fair enough. They may have a bounce spell. Um, this isn't really a great thing to bounce, but they might. Wow. Okay. They're going kind of all in on that. Um, we'll just go to Steam Vents. Uh, any amount of flexibility in our lands is going to be helpful with Genesis Ultimatum out, so we do need to keep that in mind. This does now give us Uro mana as well. All right. We'll see what they do. Ah, yep. Told you. That's how it works. Uh, it's very, very good. No doubt. Uh, these bounce spells and these tempo plays are really frustrating for a deck like this, unfortunately. But that's it's the name of the game. That's what you got to do. So I cannot be upset about it. Uh, if we get a red or a blue land, we are in good shape. Hey, look. That's not a red or a blue land. Um, so if we do this, we can potentially get another land and then just Uro... Um, which I think sounds like the best option. We'll see. If we if this even sticks, there is a world where this doesn't stick. Uh, okay. How much you want to bet they bounce it? Sure. Still get the trigger. Uh, let's get you. And we'll Uro here. I guess we could have done this Uro. That was a bit of a mistake, I suppose, but that's fine. All right. Well, I hope we don't die. <laughs> I 
chances are we've just lost. Uh, they've outdrawn us so much here. So chances are there's there's not much we can do. But, um, you know, stick it out. Always worth a shot. All right. Down to six. Drawing two cards on the opponent's end. Uh, this doesn't have a great way other than Terror of the Peaks to deal with creatures, and so that's where the one of the faults of this deck is. Alright, how much we bet and they have a counter? I'm betting a lot, but we're going to do it anyway. We got to go for the cool play. We just have to. It's not going to work, but we just have to do this. The correct thing would have been to play Uro, <laughs> like 100%. Oh, wow. It lived. That was surprising. Uh, let's see, one, two, we'll just have it intertapped. We're not going to be able to play anything else other than like a Paradise Druid anyway. Uh, or, yeah. Alright, well. We did it. We lived potentially another turn. <laughs> Probably not actually, because they just get to adapt this, do they not? And then we just lose, right? Not adapt, I'm sorry. They get to, is it adapt? Yeah, it is adapt. Adapt four, so that puts it at eight. So maybe we don't die? Oh, this is a interesting hand. Uh, thankfully these have hexproof, so like they can't just bounce them, uh, which does mean we can block here if we need to, but this is just gonna kill us like 100%. They did not adapt it. Okay. I guess they just don't wanna burn the mana. They're leaving it up to be safe. How, do they have enough? Eight. Five, six, seven, but it's one less for every instant and sorcery, is that correct? Whatever. Alright, let's see what we can do. Um, what's the correct thing? The cool thing is Genesis Ultimatum. <laughs> Again, which leaves us four mana. Alright, look. We're gonna do it. Screw it. We're in this for the cool points, guys. Yeah, dude, you got it. Um, <laughs> uh, Inner's tapped is the correct thing. Um, let's see if they have another counter or a bounce. If they do, we just lose, and that's fine. Yeah. All right, we're just going to... They have all the answers in the world. Uh, an unchecked... Uh, octopus there. Oh, so, so backbreaking. All right. Um, well, we did find a couple matchups where this deck is not good, as I expected. Um, and that's perfectly fine. I don't think you're ever going to get a deck that's always good. But uh, the things that this deck struggles with, first off, um, not very good against counters or bounce, as we saw. Um, and any deck that's able to deal with the big creatures, uh, whether that be through burn or through just kill spells, especially like murderous riders and things like that, um, those are going to be obviously just amazing against this kind of deck. Sweepers are amazing against this kind of deck. Um, the only good thing about this uh, against a deck like that is if you get that optimal turn where they can't counter you and you get to get a, uh, a Genesis Ultimatum act, uh, uh, you get to play it um, without it being interrupted, um, then there is always a chance that you win because Fiery Emancipation with Terror of the Peaks and like any other creature card kind of gets you in that position where it's like, okay, I probably can just win by shooting you immediately. Um, and so there is a world where you win um, almost any at, at any given stage of the game. It's just a matter of knowing how to play around it and that kind of thing. And if you can't, you can't. But um, th that's that's basically the uh, inevitability of the deck coming into play, which is really, really nice. Um, as far as how the deck feels and how it just plays in general, uh, I really, really like it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the fact that it ramps with a lot of like cheap creatures as well as things like Uro uh, give you a little bit of a cushion uh, against a lot of these early aggro decks. And then you obviously get to go over the top with things like Terror of the Peaks, Cavalier of Thorns, stuff like that while they're still playing like, you know, Witches Oven combos and things like that. And like, nothing's wrong with those decks, but this goes over the top a little bit easier. And so you've got a lot more powerful plays uh, available to you in a very quick manner, whereas those decks obviously are more incremental. And so 
Um, there's a lot to be said for this deck in the terms of it can just go over the top. It's a little focused, uh, doesn't have a whole lot of interaction, but Terror of the Peaks does give you that option, and that's obviously one of my favorite cards right now, so I'm really excited that uh, we get to play with it again. But I would suggest this deck. I really would. Uh, it's a little expensive uh, on the on the wild card end, so you know it's not necessarily the best deck ever, so if you're not into it, don't play it, but it's pretty fun. Um, it's it's really, really fun, if I'm honest. I love this. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed these videos. Please make sure to leave a like or a comment uh, if you did. Make sure to check out our Patreon as well as our Discord if you'd like to support and just hang out with us. We'd, we'd certainly appreciate it, and we'd love to have you there. So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next gameplay video.